So Paul is he's doing his best to teach, to convince the Hebrews that they need to focus on Jesus Christ and understand that the law of Moses was the law that was helping them to look unto Jesus. One of the things he does in Hebrews 7 is he teaches them about Abraham, how Abraham paid tithes to Melchizedek and the significance of that. Because the Hebrews, they looked at Abraham as their father. He was saying to them, Abraham paid tithes to Melchizedek. He understood that Melchizedek held the priesthood after the order of Jesus Christ. Melchizedek was a representation of Jesus Christ. In turn, he was saying to them, Abraham believed in Jesus Christ, then you ought to do the same. Because Melchizedek held the priesthood, and the priesthood was forever like Jesus Christ. The priesthood, he was a representation of, of Jesus Christ. And that's what he was doing. He was trying to tease them and help them understand why it's important for them to believe in Jesus Christ and understand that Jesus Christ is more important or is higher than the law. In Hebrew chapter 7 verse 1, we learn, For this Melchizedek, king of Salem, priest of the Most High God, who met Abraham returning from the slaughter of the kings and blessed him, right? So we know that Melchizedek, he's a king, but more importantly, he's the priest of the Most High. And Abraham, he blessed Abraham, right? And when, when they met, verse 2, to also Abraham gave a tenth part of all, first being by interpretation, king of righteousness, and after that also king of Salem, which is king of peace. So he's helping us understand that in this instance, Abraham being blessed by Melchizedek and how Melchizedek is a representation of Jesus Christ. Because you see that he's king of righteousness, okay? He's king of Salem, which by interpretation is king of peace. And we know that is Jesus Christ. Without father, without mother, without descendant, having neither beginning of days nor end of life, but like unto the Son of God, abideth a priest continually. Okay, so we know that Joseph Smith did um, clarify this particular verse. And this is what Joseph added to it. He says, For Melchizedek was ordained a priest, okay, after the order of the Son of God. Which order was helping us understand that Melchizedek himself does not mean he was without father, okay, or without mother. It means the priesthood was without beginning or end, so it was forever. That's, this is what the verse meant. That's how Joseph Smith uh, helped us clarify this verse uh, for this Melchizedek was ordained a priest after the order of the son of God which order was without father without mother without descendant having neither beginning of days nor end of life and all those who are ordained unto this priesthood are made like unto the son of God abiding a priest continually that's important speaking about the priesthood right that this priesthood is forever and it's after the son of God that's why Melchizedek in this instance, was a representation of Jesus Christ. Now consider how great this man was, unto whom even the patriarch Abraham gave the tenth of the spoils. So he's helping them understand that Abraham saw this man as a great man. Right? And we know this man is a representation of Jesus Christ because of the priesthood. And the question you might have is, why do we call the priesthood after this man? Right? And that's why, because he was a great man. And the, and the way Amma teaches, he says there were many priests like him but none greater that's why we call the priesthood after him because the true name of the priesthood is the priesthood after the son of god but to stop repeating the name of god out of respect the priesthood was named after melchizedek and this is very same melchizedek abraham paid tithes to him teaching all of us especially the hebrews that he believed in the priesthood that this man held which was the priesthood of jesus christ and he's saying to the Hebrews, that's why it's important that you also believe in Jesus Christ and understand that Jesus Christ is greater than the law. Verse 5. And verily they are of the sons of Levi who receive the office of the priesthood, have a commandment to take tithes of the people according to the law, that is, of their brethren, though they come out of the loins of Abraham. So he's helping us understand the significance of, of Abraham paying tithes to this man because he says they are the sons of Levi. We do know that uh, the sons of Levi were the ones who were given the priesthood. Before the restoration, the priesthood was only given to the sons of Levi and to nobody else. And we know that as they received this office, because this office came by as, as a form of birthright. If you're born in, in the right lineage, then you receive the priesthood. And then one of the things that's significant about holding the priesthood was you receive the tithes of the people. 
but he whose descendant is not counted from them received tithes of Abraham. From verse 5, another thing that he mentions is that the difference between Melchizedek and the tribe of Levi is that the tribe of Levi, they descended from Abraham. But Melchizedek did not descend from Abraham because Abraham was still alive. He, he could not be his, his son or his grandson or whatever. Right? But he whose descendant is not counted from received tithing of Abraham and blessed him that had the promises. So we learn that he had the priesthood. But later on, we know that the priesthood only came through descendants of Abraham. And only those who were linked to, to, to the line of Levi. Okay. But then how did this happen that now Melchizedek is able to receive tithes and bless Abraham? And without all con contradiction, the less is blessed of the better. And here men that die receive tithes, but there he receiveth them of whom it is witness that he liveth. So he says, this man is alive because he did receive the tithes from, from Abraham. As I may so say, Levi also who received tithes, paid tithe in Abraham. We know that the sons of Levi received tithing. But because they are descendants of Abraham, that means their brothers and sisters are paying tithing. So that in a, in a way, he is also paying tithing. The, the priests of Levi, right? But he who was yet in the loins of his father when Melchizedek met him, that means the sons of Levi, they are still not born yet at that moment when Abraham paid tithes to Melchizedek. For if therefore perfection were by the Levitical priesthood, for under it the people received the law, but further need was there that another priest would rise after the order of Melchizedek and not after the order of Aaron. What Paul is saying here is that this priesthood existed way before the law of Moses, way before the sons of Levi. If therefore perfection were by the Levitical priesthood, okay, because we know that the law of Moses was administered by the Lef Levitical priesthood or the Aaronic priesthood. These were the priests that administered the law of Moses. And Paul is doing his best to teach the Hebrews, that he's bigger than the law of Moses. And you have to let go of the law of Moses and follow Christ. This is his objective here. What further need was there that another priest should arise after the order of Melchizedek? So he's saying there were other priests other than the sons of Levi. We know the sons of Levi were administering the law of Moses. That's why he says in verse 12, for the priesthood being changed, there is made of necessity a change also of the law. The priesthood was changed under Moses because the people were not ready to receive the higher law. So the Lord gave them a lesser law. And to administer that law, a new priesthood had to do that, not the original priesthood. So there was the Melchizedek priesthood, which has always existed. But since there was a lesser law under Moses, there had to be a lesser priesthood, which was the Aaronic priesthood, which administered the law. For he of whom these things are spoken pertaineth to another tribe, of which no men give attendance at the altar. He says there's another tribe. And according to the law, people did not consider it. It was not important when they were administering the law of Moses. Because we know the law is administered by the altar. For it is evident that our Lord sprang out of Judah, of which tribe Moses speak nothing concerning priesthood. So we know that Jesus Christ came from the tribe of Judah. The priesthood was only given to the tribe of Levi from the 12 tribes. That's what, he's, that's what Paul is saying. And we know that. Paul, uh, Moses said nothing about the tribe of Judah and the priesthood. So he's saying the Levites had the priesthood, but this there's another priesthood that has always existed, but was not available through the law of Moses. For it is yet far more evident that after the similitude of Melchizedek, there arises another priest. So now he says, Abraham is here. And the priesthood you know came through this, uh, the descendants of Abraham. But Melchizedek, Okay, he was a priest at the time of Abraham. That means this priesthood that always existed because there's a priest already when Abraham was there. But after Moses, only priests we know about are the descendants of Abraham. It's, it is evident that there is another priesthood. There is uh, other forms of priests other than the Levites, who is made not after the law of carnal commandment, but after the power of endless life. So he's not made after the order of the law of Moses because we know the law of Moses administered the carnal, the carnal commandments. But he says he came after the order of endless, li endless life because the priesthood is forever. The priesthood existed before Abraham. The priesthood would exist after Abraham. For he testifieth thou art a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. For there is verily a disannulling of the commandment going before for the weakness and unprofitableness thereof. For the law made nothing perfect, but the bringing in 
of a better hope did by which we draw nigh unto God. So this is what Joseph Smith said, correcting some of the errors in this verse, verse 19. For the law was administered without an oath, made nothing perfect, but was only the bringing in of a better hope by the which we draw nigh unto God. The law brought people hope. It did not bring them eternal blessings. In short, the, the law was to help them look to Jesus Christ. And through Jesus Christ, that's how they can have eternal life. The law itself was not to bring them eternal life. That's what Paul means here by using the word oath, something that is binding forever. The law only gave them hope, but it did not bring an oath, something that can last forever, which is eternal life. For those priests were made without an oath, but this with an oath by him that said unto him, The Lord swear and will not repent our other priests for even after the order of Melchizedek. So we know that the law of Moses could not save them. It was there to give them hope, but it could not give them eternal life, right? That's why they had to look to Melchizedek or to Jesus Christ for the gift of eternal life. For so much was Jesus made a surety of a better testament. So we know that because of Jesus Christ, that's how eternal life and exaltation is made possible, not through the law of Moses. And there truly were many priests because they were not suffered to continue by reason of death. So he says this priests of the order of Melchizedek, it was not just Melchizedek alone, but there's been many like unto him. But they could not last forever, obviously, because at some point they die. And this man, because he continueth forever, hath an unchangeable priesthood, right? So how does it continue forever, whereas other priests die? It's because of the name, because of, the, of, of, of his name meant to be a representation of the higher priesthood. That's why today we call the priesthood after his name. That's how he lives forever. Wherefore, he is able to save them to the uttermost that come unto God by him, seeing he even liveth to make intercessions for them. So because he lives forever or because the priesthood lives forever through his name, it's able to help people to be saved, right? For such an high priest became us, who is holy, harmless, and defiled, separate from sinners, and made higher than the heavens. Right now, he's referring to who? to Jesus Christ, who needeth not who needeth not daily as those high priests to offer up sacrifice first for his own sins, and then for the people's. For this he did once when he offered up himself. So we know that the priests of Levi every morning when they wake woke up. They had to go into the temple and perform a sacrifice every day, right? And in that sacrifice, it's broken into two parts. The first part is they offer a sacrifice for their own sins and ask forgiveness for their own sins. And the second part is to ask forgiveness for the people. Jesus Christ did not need to do that because he was perfect. Whereas the priests of Levi were not perfect, hence they had to, they had to every day ask for forgiveness for their sins. But Jesus Christ was perfect. He did not have to do that. For the law maketh men high priests, which hath infirmity, right? So we know because of the law of Moses, the high priests were, were men who, who were human, who had weaknesses and were not perfect and did wrong things from time to time. But the word of the oath, which was since the law, maketh the son who is consecrated for overcome. But we know that the higher law, it made Jesus Christ the priest who was perfect, who overcame all things. So he's doing his best to help teach the Hebrews the difference between the law of Moses and the Melchizedek priesthood and the priests who administered the law of Moses and, and the priests who administered the ordinances of the Melchizedek priesthood. The blessings that comes from the obeying and following the law of Moses, the blessings that comes from obeying and following the Melchizedek priesthood because he says the ultimate priest is Jesus Christ and Melchizedek He's just a representation of Jesus Christ, who is the ultimate priest, who sacrificed for all of us, who died for all of our sins, who we ought to look up to and follow. And he's doing his best to, to convince the Hebrews that they need to follow Jesus Christ and stop following the, the law of Moses. Because the law of Moses was there to prepare them to receive Jesus Christ. 